All right, guys, so today I'm going to be doing a guide on how to prep for 1.4 and kind of the future of division. Now, a lot of people have been asking me to do a video like this, telling you exactly how I'm going to prep for the patch. Um, you know, maybe some insider information that I have on what's going to be in there, which I can't give you. But what I can tell you is kind of the same thing I've been saying in all of my streams when people ask. It's a very broad general statement about how to properly prepare for any new content that's going to be released any new patch, any sort of balancing changes, regardless of whether or not I have information, this is how I would then play the game knowing that there is a significant change to the core balancing coming up. So the first thing I want to talk about is gear diversity and weapon diversity. So a lot of people that I know have like a stash full of, you know, all shotguns right now or all SMGs or all something, some specific gun type that they're either very familiar with and they like a lot or that is, you know, overpowered at the moment, stuff like that. And I would say that that's not something you should be doing. You should definitely, if you have the time to do so, be acquiring many different gun types. As you can see here, I have some shotguns, I have some, some LMGs, I have a bolt action sniper, I have some more shotguns and LMGs, I have some submachine guns, I have some assault rifles, I have all this different stuff. Uh, because regardless of what the changes would be, and I can't actually talk about anything specific that I may or may not know because of being in Sweden, I now have gun types that is going to encompass any possible change that they would make and give me kind of a, a foot in the door into what the new meta is going to be. Uh, moving on to actual gear types, you're going to want the same thing, diversity. You're going to want some of every single gear type that you can possibly get your hands on. Everything that you can have is good to have because when they say something like core balancing and significant changes and you know restructuring the game, that means that they're going to take things that are weak and make them stronger, and they're going to take things that are too strong and make them weaker, or somewhere around that kind of style of, of editing. And when they do that, that's going to mean that all these different gear sets that maybe aren't competitive right now may very well become competitive, and all these different gear sets, or not all these different ones, but the specific few gear sets that are currently smashing the Dark Zone may not be able to do that anymore. Again, no specific information, I don't even have any to give you, however, this is how I would prep when they say core balancing and overhaul. So having a diverse selection of gear at your disposal. Another thing is that I would kind of find some ulterior you know, things other than gear sets. I have this tenacious mask. That's great. I should honestly find a few more. I like the talent of, um, what is it, uh, rehabilitated, you know, where regenerating health during a status effect that was broken in 1.1. You know, it got, it got fixed. You know, it's working as intended now, but it actually has some, some benefits during status effects. Uh, something like, you know, the cleanse effect on the talent, where if you use a med kit, it cleanses status effects right there. All these different things that normally maybe you wouldn't even glance twice at and you just deconstruct or sell, keep them around in prep for a massive overhaul of a patch. So all, all the same stories for the chess pieces here. I have a vigorous chess piece. I have a reckless chess piece. I think I have a robust chess piece. I have all these different things that currently a lot of people may not look at very often. I mean, vigorous and reckless are kind of the exception. People definitely use those a lot. Uh, but robust, stuff like that, people aren't really looking at that. That's why I have one, you know, just in case there's some kind of balancing that, that comes swooping in with the patch and makes that usable in some kind of fringe build capacity, which I'm going to be all about. And after 1.4, I'll be producing as many builds as possible for you guys. Uh, moving on to backpacks, again, I have a ton. I have inventive, you know, for a skill power percentage increase when I'm at full health, all these different things. Uh, maybe not just gear sets, but having a wide variety, not even all 268, having some 214s just because of the talents on them or just because of the, the specific stat points, uh, all this different stuff, and a diverse selection of gear. Again, I won't harp on it too much further. Now, after talking about gear, I'm going to move on to probably the most important thing that you should prep for, and that's currency and materials. Um, a lot of people, you know, kind of ignore crafting right now which is fine but when they say core system and overhaul that tells me that there might be a change to that i can't guarantee it i don't even know however i want to have as many crafting materials as possible now one thing that you want to know is division tech is the go-to when you're actually trying to get crafting materials and i know it's a three to one conversion rate however it's much better to have that because if i were to go in and i need to craft like you know a wide selection of something that i you know definitely need I would be able to convert the division tech into whichever crafting material I need at the time. It's versatile, okay? So it's, it's a good replacement if you have to get both tools and electronics uh, or you have to get three different things, then just get division tech because you don't actually have to get as much of it. In the long run, you can convert it to whatever you need specifically at the time to craft more um, and it's extremely useful. But maxing out as many of these different crafting materials as possible is going to be key before any patch at all. Also, you're going to want to max out your intel your directive intel right here uh, i know it doesn't have that much of a use right now uh, it, it's 
not something that you're going to really glance at twice, but maxing that out is going to be nice just in case that there's a change that encompasses that. Maxing out your weapon kits, it's going to be nice if you can, uh, just in case there's a change. Acquiring as many, you know, normal credits and as many Dark Zone credits as possible. And it, actually, what I would suggest, uh, the way I would prep for a patch, is converting half of your Dark Zone funds into normal credits. I'm probably going to do that later tonight. Uh, so that you have a wide spread of things to draw on. You have tons of every single currency type. That way, no matter what they implement, no matter what it costs, you have a good, you know, jump start in order to buy it or to buy a bunch of it or whatever it may be uh, if they do you know rearrange things like that if they don't that's fine you can just convert it to whatever you need uh, you can convert division tech to the crafting material of your choice you could convert DZ funds to normal credits uh, there's all these different ways to do that actually, I actually have videos on that in uh, patch 1.3 you know miscellaneous tips if you're wondering uh, but it's just a solid way to go when prepping maxing out Phoenix credits as well definitely something that you would want to do uh, not only for weapon rerolls, but, you know, maybe purchasing things from the special vendor. Uh, but having 2,000 of those, definitely not going to hurt. You should probably try and have some keys as well. I don't because I keep dying while manhunt. Um, but just in case, I don't know. They might have a use. Who knows? Um, outside of that, I would say that it might be good to start using alternative gear sets right now in maybe PvP or even PvE to prep for the changes. So I'm definitely guilty of using, you know, Sentry Shotgun or uh, Alpha Bridge Shotgun or all these different, you know, M870 Shotgun builds with the different, you know, God Roll M870, you know, setups with the three towns uh, and one-shotting players when I actually get a headshot from close range, running around them, you know, the typical run-and-gun style that we've been doing. However, I would say that maybe practicing some other things, practicing some different mechanics. When they say core system and overhaul... That tells me, even if I had absolutely no inside information whatsoever, that things will be different. Now, there's not exact, there's not an exact science for telling how things would be different, uh, but the way to prep for that is to just make sure that you have a wide array of skills to draw from, things that you're used to playing, um, you know, and styles, and a lot of different guns. Again, a lot of different gear. Uh, outside of that, I would suggest a couple of farming routes for people. Uh, just to prep, if you don't have very much time, there's a really good farming route where if you go into the dark zone at this checkpoint, West 53rd, and then you hit this contaminated zone right here, there's actually three boxes in there and a boss. So that's a total of seven items if you're not on a server that's already been farmed. It's very easy to acquire. There's not many NPCs. Uh, and it's, you know, you can almost do this solo if you're maxed out. You probably can do it solo. I'm sure some people in the comments will be like, oh, I do that solo all the time, but that that's cool. Um, but if you have a squad or two or three, this is a very easy farming route. So you, you hit that contaminated zone, you get everything from there. You come down here to this other contaminated zone. Uh, typically, you're going to have to have some sort of marksman rifle to deal with the, the, the big fat cleaners that are in there um, and take things out from range. But then there's going to be another boss and another box, which means you can deconstruct one item and then have a full inventory of nine things that you hopefully want. And then you can come down here uh, and extract them at this extraction. It's a lot easier here at this particular extraction than it is at, let's say, this one or this one. So that's a really good one to go to. And then you can server transfer and do it all again if you find the right place. But that's a really fast farming route to get a lot of, you know, items that you can sell for credits or that you can deconstruct really quickly. And that's really nice. Another thing that I would say that you should be doing, and I haven't really done a lot of it myself, but is acquiring a ton of, of mods for both gear and weapons. Now, it's good to have these just in case. Uh, you know, I would go in and actually in your stash, this is something that I routinely do, but I don't have a good display of it right now. You can equip a mod into a mask or into a chest piece or whatever piece of gear and then put it back into your stash. So I would say go through and no matter what mod you find, no matter what it has on it, just take it, put it into one of your gear pieces and throw it in your stash just in case. It's free materials later on if you end up needing electronics. Um, if it does end up getting some sort of change, that's awesome. If it doesn't, you can sell it for regular credits. It's just maxing out your stash capacity in full, and that will be extremely helpful. Again, there's two mod slots on all the chest pieces. You can just go ahead and throw mods in there uh, nonstop. And then also the same story goes for weapons. You can fill up all these different weapon mod slots and put them right back in your stash. Regardless of whether or not the mod is good, it, it can deconstruct into tools if it, if it turns out to be useless. It can um, be sold for credits, the same story as gear mods, and just maxing out everything that you're holding and have being a loot hoarder, honestly, being a pack rat before a patch is just absolutely the way to go. Um, there's probably some other things that you could be doing, but that's about all the advice that I have. 
you know, knowing your farming roots, maxing out your, your stash, you know, farming every single piece of gear that you possibly can, keeping an eye out for those things that maybe normally you deconstruct and just waiting a couple, you know, weeks to deconstruct if you can fit it into a gear, a gear piece, throw it in your stash, or if you can possibly deconstruct something else that you have a duplicate of and just keep it around and wait. Um, that's going to do it for now, guys. If you want to support the channel, please check out the links below. I appreciate you watching. Um, and as always, have a nice day.